All right, so it is uh, it's time for an update on the no ferts, just dirt. Uh, Diana Wald said planted tank. Um, so as you can see, I've already got fish and plants in it now. I've had the fish and plants in. I had the plants in for about a month before I added the fish. Um, and for fish, we went with the panda guppies. And they should have already had babies in last. Yeah, no, they had babies. They did not eat them all. Um, so yeah, that's that's our stocking. Um, pretty soon this will be coming off. Um, uh, we just have to let the the tank kind of keep cycling, and then I'll probably just go with an air stone for circulation. Uh, maybe even a sponge filter for circulation and filtration. Um, but uh, yeah, so the tank's doing well. Um, no algae issues at all whatsoever, which is amazing. Um, and I kind of skipped a part because uh, it did get green water um, for like the first two months of its life. Um, and soon after putting in the plants, uh, the green water basically went away. So it got green water because it had excess nitrates, nitrites and ammonia from cycling. Um, we added the plants and the plants consume those excess nitrates. Now, I like green water, and I don't really get rid of it when I have it if I have other algaes. And the reason is because the green water does not hurt your plants and that it doesn't attach to them, doesn't hurt your tank or your hardscape and that it doesn't attach to them, uh, and you can water it, and you can water change it out. Whereas other algaes like blackbeard, um, string algaes, there's a lot more manual labor <laughs> involved in removing them and uh, and sometimes you're just removing entire leaves when it's blackbeard algae just to get rid of it. Uh, whereas green water does not do that. It is a waterborne little algae spore. Um, it can kind of starve some of your plants some light, in which case start doing some water changes. But if you have a balanced tank, you shouldn't get any algae. And I'd like to argue that this is looking fairly balanced. Now this is my mother's tank and she actually does maintenance on it. She'll give it a water change once a, once a week or once every other week. Um, which this tank could probably do a water change. Well, with how many fish it is, two, well, once every two weeks is probably pretty good for a 50% water change or less. But um, yeah. Uh, so anyways, what we went for on uh, plants was um, I wanted a good amount of root feeders, mainly because I wanted some root feeders to hold all of this together. Um, this is a really light gravel, and all those roots are basically going to run and cover the bottom of this tank and hold everything together um, and give it a good root structure. Now, I did go pretty thin on the substrate. I could have probably put another half inch of, of substrate, maybe a quarter inch of substrate and another quarter inch of dirt. But I don't want to go too heavy on the load because this isn't a tank I'm actually watching. This is a tank in my mother's office that she's watching and she doesn't necessarily have a lot of experience like I do or some of you do. But that also kind of makes this great for some of you who would like to set up a tank for their parents or set up a tank in your office where you're not going to be all the time and you already know you're not going to be there on the weekends or whatever. Uh, this can make a great tank for that. Um, this isn't being dosed fertilizers and you can see we've got good growth. I barely had, if any at all, melt back on the crypts. Um, I've got a few java ferns, looks like java moss. I want to get that out of there because I do not want that to take over this tank. Um, a few little Anubius nanas that came out of the old tank that was here. I've got to take that one and plant it back down. Um, and then we have some Rotala rotundifolia, which I really like because, uh, it adds a little bit of color even in low tech tanks. You can see we've got some nice pink right there. If I were to trim that down and put it under the light, um, we would have some nice pink tops in the water and under the water. Um, and in the back here, what we have is Hygrophilia salicifolia. Now, this is one of my favorite plants. If I could only have one plant in all my tanks, this might be it. Um, the Hygrophilia salicifolia. One, it's pretty tough and durable. It's not gonna, its leaves aren't gonna break on you. Grows great in low tech, has a good root system, and it also has a good foliage feeding system. So it's very easy to feed this plant. It does great in a lot of tanks. It doesn't need a lot of light. Uh, you don't get much more color than green out of it. Um, sometimes you can get the Augustifolia to turn pinkish red. This is a salicifolia. You won't get that that much red out of it in my experience. But uh, it's a good plant. It sucks up a lot of nutrients. And uh, I think it has a good look too. But uh, 
yeah, that's basically the update on this tank. I'm going to top this water off and feed these fish and uh, put that Anubius back down in there. And that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. Um, I do actually want to clarify two other things about this tank. When I was setting it up, someone had pointed out I didn't kind of clarify why I was putting in food, snails, or squeezing out the sponge. Um, I squeeze out the sponge to seed this tank with beneficial bacteria from an old tank that was seeded and established. So that's our beneficial bacteria. Uh, we're intentionally putting that in, whereas we could just let time slowly collect that bacteria from the air, the water, and the natural environment, which will happen, but takes much longer. So that's what the sponge is for. Then we want to feed that bacteria. That is what the snails and fish food are for. The fish food will produce ammonia, which feeds the ammonia, um, the ammonia consuming nitrifying bacteria. Um, and the snails will help do that as well. They will produce ammonia. They will also break down waste. So we don't just have a bunch of mulm down here. Um, snails will actually break down that mulm uh, even further for you and make it even more bioavailable for your plants to consume. Um, so that is why I add snails, food, and um, squeeze out sponges into all of my tanks when I am cycling them. Um, and snails, uh, I mean, I'm a snail lover. If you're worried about snails, um, uh, you're missing out because they're pretty awesome. They do a great job of cleaning your tank. And if you really don't like snails the way they look, that's why I go with these pink ram's horns or even a mystery snail. But uh, yeah. Anyways, that is the uh, No Fert Just Dirt tank. Um, I think this is like a six months update. And uh, we'll just kind of tune in on this tank as it has problems or, um, you know, just basically as it develops. And uh, if I have to refert or re dirt or do anything different to it, um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this tank should be a well established, no fert needed tank for at least a year or two, probably two. But, uh, yeah, anyways, we'll see.